Okay. Okay, students. I am hoping you're home and staying well. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that you get this next part two video in its entirety because we're going to get a little bit more complicated and we're going to go a little bit deeper into electrical theory. Again, you're going to be asking the question, how does this theory apply to automotive? And as you work on cars more and more and more, you'll find out that this theory helps you jump over steps that you normally would have to relearn or normally have to take extra steps in doing you'll be able to skip over those things because of the theory that goes behind it. So I need you to understand the theory is extremely important. It's just not like a math exercise. This is applied to everything you're gonna be doing, like installing stereos, fixing blinkers, looking at the electronics, looking at uh, things that are coming up on the scan tool. This theory here will apply to it. So let's begin with a bit of a review Okay, so last time we talked about Ohm's Law, and I want to be very clear, so get your notes out, and I would uh, title it uh, Part 2A, Series Circuit. So that's how I would do that. Now what I want to show you is a series circuit, meaning that everything is connected in series. And you can see the battery here, the uh, negative and the positive, or excuse me, negative, positive. And then you see a light bulb here and a light bulb here, and it represents a load, and it also represents a resistance. We'll get into that later. But what you notice that in a series circuit, the voltage will change, but the amperage will stay the same. The reason, if there was a kink in a pipe here, and let's say this pipe here it was a pipe, not a circuit, and 10 gallons a minute would go through it, but I put a kink in here, and only one gallon a minute goes through here, that affects the entire circuit because it's in series. So we're using water in the pipe to show you if I put a kink here at two gallons or one gallon a minute, even though these pipes could be 10 gallons a minute, it's gonna stay one gallon a minute. That is amperage, that is current flow. Gallons a minute is current flow. So if I've got five amps here, then five amps are gonna end up over here. They're going to be the same. But the voltage will vary. So you'll get a volt drop across this load because the load will use that electrical pressure or potential energy to turn on that light. Then it gets to this light and more volts will drop, making the voltage drop over this one here. And what you have is the formula. Voltage will vary, amps stay the same. Amps are I total is I1 equals I2 equals I3. Voltage total is voltage 1 plus voltage 2 plus voltage 3. That's the formula. Write it down in your notes for your future reference on your quiz. Parallel circuit right here. We see two lights in parallel. All right, so what's going to happen is the electrical pressure is going to stay the same. This is an air pipe, for example. We had 100 pounds PSI here, we're gonna have 100 pounds PSI here, 100 pounds PSI here, 100 pounds PSI here, and 100 pounds PSI here. The voltage will remain the same because it equalizes itself between these two circuits. However, the amperage is going to vary. This is gonna take a certain amount of current flow, and this is gonna take a certain amount of current flow, and that will change. So our formula goes like this. The voltage is the same. Voltage total is voltage one is equal to voltage two is equal to voltage three. The amps will vary. So amperage total is amperage one plus amperage two plus amperage three. That's the basic formula for figuring out these circuits. We're gonna get into it a little bit deeper into detail later on. Here we have the third type of circuit. This line is in series with this parallel circuit here. So this is called a series parallel circuit. And we'll use this formula here later on. I don't want to confuse you too much right now. But what I want to tell you is that I use this formula here to combine this into one resistor or one light bulb so I can use this formula to figure out this circuit here. All I'm doing is I'm combining these two together 
by using this formula here, and then I go ahead and use this formula to finish out the circuit. Pretty easy, we'll do the math later. Copy this down, take a look at it, and remember, there's another thing that you need to know, that when voltage goes up, amperage goes down. When amperage goes up, voltage goes down. Think about an air pipe. I have 100 pounds of pressure in a hose. I take a hatchet, I chop the hose in half, and all the air comes out, what happens to the pressure? The pressure drops. So if the pressure drops, that means the air escaping, the flow increases. Again, back to our U-shaped tube. This is water, and this is water. If the water goes up, got two inches from the top to the bottom, then the amperage or the water goes down, we've got four inches here. Do you see how the U-shaped tube is our analogy for understanding how circuits basically work? Okay. So with that, I'm going to cut and we'll go ahead and race the board and go to the next section. Okay, we're going to get into now a little bit deeper into what's called electromagnetic induction. I don't know if we did the, uh, I did the farmer example with the farmer putting the coil through the uh, conductor last time. We're going to get into it a little bit deeper. We're going to call, talk about EMF or electro E motive M force. This is why voltage is equal to E. This is where the E comes from. Okay, just so you know where the E comes from. So let's go ahead and do this really quick. So I'm going to produce a coil right now in electromagnetic force and I've got uh, plus 12 volts. Okay, and I go through coil. I'm going to make the coil really big so we can understand this. Really big. Okay. And then we're going to go out here and we're going to go to ground. There's our ground right there. And in the middle right here, we're going to put a switch. We're going to install a switch because we're going to need that switch in just a minute. So here's our switch. We're going to put a little rudimentary switch right here. And this is our contact point right here. So right now I'm going to close the switch and current begins to flow through the coil. Okay? And it flows through the coil because it wants to go to ground. That's why the current will flow. Now, it will only flow for so long and then it'll quit charging. The answer to the question is why? Why does it stop? Why does current stop? flowing after the coil is charged, and here's why. Let's take a look at this. Now this is going to apply directly to ignition systems. This will apply directly to why a spark plug will fire. We'll get into that a little bit later. So here comes the basics. So I allow 12 volts to come in here, and remember, perpendicular to each wire comes a magnetic field that goes out to here like this, okay? And this field expands until it intersects the next coil. So if this was two volts here, it intersects this coil, this coil begins to expand, and it intersects the next coil that begins to expand, and intersects the next coil that begins to expand, and so on and so on and so forth. And what happens is we got two volts here, we got four volts here, six volts here, eight volts here, and the more the coils, the higher the voltage until the coil gets completely saturated and when it's completely saturated the coil starts to look like this. The magnetic field starts to look like a magnet. It starts to fully charge. Now this is a fully charged coil. And that's why the current stops flowing because the coil has been charged. It offers so much resistance that current can't flow anymore because there's already too much voltage or electrical pressure pushing against the current going into it, it stops the flow of voltage. Now, we open the circuit back up. When we open the circuit back up, the field collapses. This, these lines of force start to disappear. These lines of force start to disappear. These lines of force go away. Now, watch what happens here. If I do this, and I make the force go out and in, out and in, 
out and in by turning this on and off, on and off, on and off, I create an expanding and collapsing field. Expanding and collapsing field. In other words, these expanding lines of force going through this coil right here are cutting, these lines are cutting its way through the coil and jacking up the voltage. The faster I turn this switch on and off, the more energy this coil produces. The faster I turn this on and off and the more coils I insert, put a coil in here and a coil in here, the higher the voltage. So I can go from 12 volts to 50,000 volts just by turning that switch on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off really fast. How fast depends on what's making it turn on, whether it be the computer or the points inside a mechanical system. Don't worry about that right now. Just know from 12 volts I can get 50,000 volts by making this field expand and contract, expand and contract. You remember clearly, when I had that big pipe and I was carrying it across that inductive field above my head, I was cutting those lines of force with the pipe and it picked up a voltage and it shocked me and knocked me down because I was cutting through those lines of force. So turning this on and off is just like walking through those lines of force. I'm hoping that you understand that. That is called electromagnetic induction. That's okay, now it's going to get a little bit more complicated, but then I'll stop. I won't get too complicated after this. So bear with me. Here we go. Now we're going to take part C and we're going to add to the coil and we're going to turn it into an ignition system coil based on a car. Here we go. So we have an ignition coil and it's going to look like a standard everyday old 1960s coil. Looks like a jug, I know, but we have plus here, we have minus here, and then we have a coil here that goes right out to a spark plug. And the spark plug will kind of look like Okay, there's my poor attempt at a spark plug. I'm very sorry about the artwork. Please forgive my terrible artwork. I know I should have went to art school. Okay, so watch what happens now. What I'm going to do is on this negative side, I am going to install a switch. There's my switch. There's my contact point. Here's my ground. Okay. Now that switch, I'm going to operate it really, really fast here in a minute. Now I want you to, it's a thought experiment, so stay with me. You guys are smart students, so I think you can figure this out. So here we go. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put in on my primary coil, call it primary, we have a coil here and we're going to call this about 60 windings. So we have coil of 60 windings here. All right. Now we have a secondary coil. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. And this secondary coil really is going to be about, it's going to be about, um, well, we're going to say it's going to be about 300 windings. Okay. That's my secondary coil. Now, keep in mind that these coils don't necessarily have to touch, but this one here is going to go from here, it's going to jump this one, it's not going to touch that one, and it's going to go right to the spark plug. That's where this coil is going to go. So from here to the plug. Okay. Now, in real life, you're going to notice that these coils are going to be hooked together. They don't have to be. But it does give the coil more efficiency by physically connecting them together. But the spark plug would still fire if they were not connected together because of electromagnetic induction. However, 
They hooked them together for a reason, and that reason is to increase the efficiency. But let's go, let's forget about that right now. Let's forget about whether these are hooked together or not at this point. We don't really care. Right now, here's what we care about. So this primary coil is directly wired to this brown switch right here. It's directly wired to here. Okay, here we go. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and give it plus 12 volts. I take my key, I turn it on, and I supply plus 12 volts to this primary coil. There we go. The key is on. Now, my computer or my remote switch is going to operate at about... 60 times a second. So we're going to call it 60 hertz for this moment. This means this switch is going to go on and off 60 times a second. What does that mean? That means that coil is going to be expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting on the primary side 60 times a second. So with 60 windings, we go to maybe 250 volts. That's what we produce right here about 250 volts this is real data because of the expanding and contracting expanding and contracting field from 12 volts we get 250 volts that gets induced into this coil here now that that expanding and contracting expanding and contracting field is getting 300 windings you got more windings higher voltage this is going to give me about 50,000 volts. And that's going to be enough to fire the spark plug. And all I have to do to make that happen is turn that switch on and off, on and off, get these fields expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting. And every time the field, every time this opens up, this spark plug fires. Every time this closes, this coil charges. Here we go. Close charge, open, fire. Close, primary charges, secondary charges, open, the field collapses, fires a spark plug. It goes to ground here when it's closed. It goes to ground here when the switch is open. When this switch is closed, we charge. When this switch is open, it fires. Charge, fire. Okay? So here we go. We close, we charge. We open, we fire. Close, we charge. We open, we fire. And that is how a spark plug fires primary and secondary coils through magnetic induction. On one, here we go. Okay, welcome back. Here we go. Part C is our review. Ohm's law. Ohm's law is a very, very, very simple mathematical equation. We just simply draw a circle. We put E for voltage, or I'll just put a little subheading there. I for amps, we'll put an A there, and R for resistance, we'll do the horseshoe there. If we don't know what the voltage is, we cover it up and we take the amps times the resistance. If we don't know what the amps are, we cover it up and we divide the resistance into the voltage. If we don't know what the voltage is, we simply times the amps times the resistance. And we are able to fix fuel injectors that way from our last lesson. Remember. All I got to do is use this formula and apply it to all my fuel injectors to find out what a fuel injector is bad and which one is good. Simple Ohm's law. I could write it another way, or E is equal to I times R. You just work out the mathematical algebraic equation, but this is easier, so much easier. Three parts of the circuit. We have a, we have resistance that makes up Ohm's law. We have B, we have voltage. Excuse me. And C, we have amps. Current flow is amps, voltage is electrical pressure, and resistance is the kink in the pipe. Amps will kill you, voltage will not kill you as long as amps don't exist. A bird on the wire 
charges this little body with voltage, but it doesn't go anywhere. So they can sit on a 4,000 volt line and not get shocked. But as soon as his little foot steps off on the ground, then amps flow and the bird gets fried. So keep that in mind. I know it's vivid, but it helps you map or understand how these concepts go so you can find them in your brain. Resistance, again, is simply the kink in the pipe. Three types of circuits. There's a series, A. There's a parallel. And there is a C, a bolt series. And a, and I'll put a little N there, parallel circuit. Okay, that is a basic idea of the review that we had yesterday in that review. Now, let's keep going here for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and we will go to part D. One, part D, here we go. Part D review. Okay, this is the biggie. Number one, electro, magnetic, induction. What do we say by electromagnetic induction? What we learned is that in a coil, each coil induces a voltage into the next coil. Like this, okay? If this goes to ground, here's our ground symbol. This will be on the test. Here's our battery symbol. This will be on the test. Negative, positive, positive, negative, you can see. And when the coil charges, it builds up a field and stops the flow of current, and the coil now is charged. No more current can flow until I disconnect the coil and when I disconnect the coil, the current the field collapses and the current kind of flows back the other way and charges the coil the other direction. So it charges when it closes and it ch charges when it opens. Charging both open and close different ways. It breathes like a set of lungs. Charge, release, discharge, charge, discharge, charge, discharge. And when it does that, it brings the voltage higher and higher. The more coils, uh, let's see, number two, sorry. Number two, more the coils, the higher the voltage. Okay? Now, I can do anything I want with a coil. I can take 4,160 volts, and I can put it through a coil with just a few windings, and, well, I can put it through a coil with quite a few windings if I want, and then go down and put just a couple of windings down here, and I can bring it down to 240 volts by just simply changing the primary and secondary position. Where the more coils go here, the less coils go there, I can drop the boil voltage. So coils can bring, bring up the voltage or bring down the voltage. I can do anything I want in that direction, up or down, with a coil through electromagnetic induction. So keep in mind that the on-off function here gives me the induction to bring the voltage up, and I can induce voltage into another coil without ever touching it simply through this process right here. That is called electromagnetic induction. Okay, that ends our review today. I want you to be ready to go uh, next week with the quiz. I will be sending it out on Friday. You'll take the quiz. It'll be due on Monday, no later than that, without an excuse. You'll get a zero on PowerSchool if that quiz does not come back in reply, no attachments. Get it back to me in reply, and let me see how well you understood each part. You'll have ten questions, or five questions for part one and five questions for part two, so it's not going to be that difficult. Thank you students for joining. I really appreciate your time. I know at home it's kind of difficult to sit down and listen to this, but I really appreciate all of your time you're spending here. And with that, we'll get you a job if you're qualified. Thank you.